So I invite all of you just to take a deep breath. Even as that's going on, if you will, Lord, we release our worry, we release our anxiety, and we enter into this place with you. Meet us here. If you know this, sing along. If you don't, I'll teach it to you. I love you, Lord.
Lord, thank you for this time. Again, we, you know, we just, we hand it to you. We, we surrender what we've been carrying this last week. We proclaim that you can carry it for us. Sometimes I just have to say it over and over again, Lord. I, I believe you can carry it. I, I sometimes don't believe it. I want to carry it. But Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe that you can take it from me. So I surrender it. Thank you for this safe place that you have given us together. Lord, I thank you for every single soul in here, old and young. And I ask you to meet us in a new way this morning, in a fresh way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Welcome. I am just thrilled to be here, and I think you guys look like you are. You know, if uh, I, I'm looking around, I'm looking for some seats. So if you got some seats, could you please squish in a little bit and, and make some room for some people here who can't sit down? We know we're going to be short anyway, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. If there's any seats, raise your hand next to you. We'll get people seated that are older to can't stand well, so please, there's there's hands going up right now. Thank you so much. Man, welcome to the uh, Born Wild Breezes 8 today. We're just so, it's just awesome that you guys are here. Thanks for taking time out to come in here. We pray you feel welcome here this morning, and uh, we just want you to be like family, okay? That's all we want here. Just want you to settle in and be like family. I want to uh, give thanks to the, the Lord of my life, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity to be in beautiful eastern Oregon, to be able to do this, to have the freedom and the nation to gather together. So let's, let's bow our heads one more time. Lord, thank you for this moment that you had planned way ahead of time. Lord, may our hearts and our eyes and our ears be open to the movement of your spirit. Let us hear what you have for us today. Give us hope and a reason to live more for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I've got some thank yous to dish out here this morning, and I want to start right off by saying, you know, there's uh, 13 churches that have come together in Eastern Oregon to help put this on. Guys, that's amazing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we have leadership from those churches. If you could please stand right where you are and hold up your hand maybe. I just want to recognize you. It is so awesome to see unity in the church of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, gentlemen. Man, these guys worked hard to, to facilitate this and to put this on. And we're just so thankful for that. Uh, on the other note, we want to thank Eastern Oregon Livestock Show for allowing us to be here today and use their FFA barn. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. I want to thank uh, Buffalo Peaks Golf Course for allowing us to use their golf carts to, to help us bring people in. And uh, thank you very much here in Union. I want to thank Oregon Trail Livestock, my great friends in LeGrand for allowing us to use their panels. Thank you for all that. And I'll probably leave out some, but I don't want to do that, but it's, it's going to happen. But there is many, many people who put a lot of time and effort with their tractors, doing a lot of work last night. This was all pins, 
And look now, it's full of people. Praise God. Thank you to all of you. Maggie, that was great worship. Thank you so much. I want to thank Maggie for being here from Texas this morning. Wow. You know, her and Todd are like family, so they travel a little bit together and be able to share Jesus with people. We just appreciate that. Thank you so much for leading our hearts in worship and instruction from our Creator to get us ready for the Born Wild presentation. And finally, not least, and for you all have been waiting for, it is a great honor and a privilege for me to be able to introduce to you a champion bareback rider and a pastor. He's traveled in the rodeo circuit for 18 years, ministering to the athletes and also travels internationally, goes into prison facilities. Him and his wife reside, I believe it's in Shelley, but it's near Idaho Falls. Can we give a loving Eastern Oriental welcome to Todd Pierce? Man, I feel so uh, loved by y'all, and I'm glad that we're getting all this clapping over with so that she can figure out what to do here. Um, man, I'm kind of feeling bad. I walked past those speakers. We need to get some earplugs for the guys sitting right in front of them. But, uh, uh, gosh. You know, I, I, get, I have actually traveled to 12 different countries uh, doing this, been all over the United States. Uh, but there's never been there's no other place on the planet that I've been drawn back to as many times as this part of Oregon and I don't really know what that's all about I know it's not about me I just think that there's something super special that God's doing in this geographical area and you guys happen to be the ones that live here. And so it just makes me feel be really, I feel really honored to be able to be in front of those that somehow God has just poured his favor and blessing over this land. And I don't know if y'all know this, but when people think of Oregon, they don't think of a whole bunch of this. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, you know, Portland gets all the attention and, and that mess. And this is actually the heartbeat of our nation. And this is why it is that we have like I like to say that I have my hope in Jesus, but I sometimes need to see people that help me have hope that my sons have got a future and a hope in a country that's worth living for and dying for and that we're not going to just turn it over to whatever deception is out there that um, there's been way too high a price paid so that we can sit here in this barn and just be a family for a minute. You believe? Yeah, let's... Woo! Yeah, come on, let's actually clap for a second. Let's do it. Okay, you, what you guys are already doing is you're partnering with me because um, I don't know this horse. I've never met her. Uh, she's given me one look just through the fence there a second ago. But... This is all brand new to her. She's a two-year-old filly that uh, was raised here locally. Uh, halter rope, meaning you can lead her around with a rope. But as you can see, uh, she's not tame. She's not broke. Nobody's been on her. Um, never been saddled, any of that stuff. So she's not wild. You saw the kids up here petting her, which I thought is just beautiful because there's just something about her worth fighting for because um, I don't know how you see yourself today, but I'll just say this and I'll shut up for a minute and start working with her. We're entertained way too much. And I forbid in Jesus' name that I would risk what I'm risking, that I would, that the resources that have gone into this would be something that entertains you simply. It might be entertaining because it's kind of fun to watch what can happen here, but if you leave here unchanged, I would feel as though you wasted your time. And 
something crazy about Jesus. He could walk on water. He could raise the dead. But he couldn't change people. And you might struggle with that thought, but he refused to change people. He created a space where people felt safe enough that for the first time in their life, they actually could feel what it's like to be loved, to be accepted right where they're at. He didn't manipulate the system. He didn't brainwash people. He didn't shame them into something. He created a space where they could finally become what they were created to become. And then Jesus laid his life down and took it up again so that we could actually have that same connection with God as a father. And we can be filled with his spirit. It's kind of an upside down system. So if you come here, I can't do anything. Jesus himself can't do anything if you just decide that I just want to be entertained. So with that said, it's kind of an open-ended invitation that if you'll do this with me, I love that we got people in standing room only, but you're welcome to come up here and sit. If, you don't, if you'd rather sit than stand, you can sit on the ground. Um, and we're family now, so we might as well get close. Hold your hands out like you're going to get a gift. You don't have to. I'm just inviting you to. And say, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. That was Holy Spirit in a different language. <laughs> Holy Spirit, do what you want to do in me. Help me see. It's a big deal, folks. So, Maggie, I'm going to ask her to move. She has no idea why she's here, but this day was chosen for her to have an encounter. And that this pen isn't for her restriction. This is pen. This pen. This this time is so that she can become free because we're redefining what freedom looks like because somehow we've thought that in in a country where we're free that we're actually living like that we're living like free people and unfortunately we've abused our freedom and made ourselves slaves to other things like being so busy like living for money like changing even the human heart. We're addicted to everything and Jesus wants to set us free from it. And this horse right now, all I can see is this beauty and this potential. And until I can get her attention, she'll walk around her whole life wasting what it is that she's capable of. So you, you're going to have to decide right up front. Is, is she free right now? Or is she actually still in bondage to her small thinking? That the only thing she can think about, you can tell she thinks about it a lot, is her next meal. How she can get the rest that she wants. It's not a bad instinct, it's just a super limited instinct that's going to make her live like a prisoner. And I see a whole bunch of my fellow brothers and sisters and citizens live in such, such lives of bondage that they don't know what it's like to be free and to be powerful because I don't want to take her power from her. I want her to learn what to do with her power. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Got a girl. Got a girl. Oh, your mercy never fails. 
turn away this is a sacred moment for her and if she keeps turning away keeps looking to something else she's going to miss her moment and I don't know how you've gone to your whole life this long and waited for this moment but I believe this is your moment too she's so distracted I know, but they can't help you, sweetheart. I promise you. If they could have helped you, they'd have done it by now. I know. She's beautiful, isn't she? Wouldn't it be a waste for her to spend her whole life locked up behind fences because she doesn't know what she's made for? that I've got power but she doesn't know if I'm kind that might have just buzzed her up. So she's been used to getting pet and pampered and led around by a string, but she's never understood what it's like to be empowered. And I want to give her power. Girl. 
I know, that was weird. <laughs> it's almost like we were connected. That's weird. Yeah. It didn't hurt. I know that. It's just scary. All these thoughts go through. terrifying for her because she doesn't know what happens next. Feels like she's giving up her power. She's going to have to give away something. I can get my hands on her and she'll feel my peace. abundant life looks like. I promise you. Do I got my man with the rope? Because I want her to have some encouragement. So not playing a cat and mouse game. The Bible said that no one actually comes to the Lord unless the Spirit of the Lord draws them. And there's going to be a drawing of invitation that makes it where you can keep sitting there just thinking about things or you can experience something that changes your life forever. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to get two of us. <clears throat> now, if I'm trying to trap her, you can see this thing the wrong way. I know the significance of this moment. And if she misses it because she's figured out a way to get away, it's almost like you feel like you're getting away with something. I just think it's the kindness and the goodness of God that has allowed you to feel like you're getting away with something this long, but you really don't. There's still consequences. You want me to take it the other way? Or... Yeah. Come out of silence from wherever you've been. Come broken heart, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come. Earth has no sorrow in heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow in heaven can I just 
want to honor the timeline that we have. I want to help her because she's surrounded by a whole bunch of people and she's never seen more than one or two people at a time. So it's not real fair to her. Oh, I'm glad to just shut off whatever it was. So I think our father will orchestrate things in such a way that you've run long enough. And even if you're a religious person, you're actually more danger than those that are lost in the world because it was the, it was the religious people that had to kill Jesus because he was threatening their belief system. Everything they believed about God was stuck into a religion and they did church and they hated Jesus. Obviously something was horribly wrong. If you're doing church and you hate Jesus and the way he shows up, something went really bad. Freedom is something. Jesus didn't just preach, he demonstrated what his love looked like. He demonstrated, demonstrated what his power does. And this Philly's got just enough experience with people that all these boundaries that she's got, goodness, you're big. I'm getting shorter. I've been 30 for 22 years now. And I don't know if I'm getting shorter, but, but all the boundaries that she has has been she wants to figure out how can she feel the safest given the situation she's in and this is where she feels fairly safe because this is what her experience has given her the problem with this is that she's just led around she wasn't supposed to be led around jesus breathed his spirit into people and he says i'm going to dwell within you and i'm going to give you a power from on high and you're going to do things that people can't do you're going to do things that you never, never even dreamt of doing because you now get to carry the same power that Jesus had that rose him from the dead. I don't know about y'all, but that's a lot of power. And he demonstrated that in kindness. And so all I want to do for her is create a space where she can feel safe enough to make mistakes, feel safe enough to be insecure, and me not punish her for it. Punishment is not part of the systems of God. He already poured out all of his wrath. But we're all being judged. And I think that anybody that walks out of this feeling, feeling as though God's judgment towards you is that he's mad at you, isn't only wrong, it'll kill you. And not just in this life, it'll kill generations after you, and it'll last for eternity. And Jesus made it to where none should ever have to go through that. There's no reason to live separated anymore. I know, that's the weirdest thing yet. So typically, you don't just get on a horse right here. And I'm not doing this as a horseman. I'm doing this as a father and a lover. Someone that looks out over you as my people that Man, if God has trusted me to speak to you today, there's no greater privilege I'll ever give anybody than to be able to come into my home and speak to my family. And if our fathers allowed me to come in here and speak to his family, why would I do anything that would hurt you? Why would I add to the shame and the confusion that the world is? Because this horse is going to have an encounter today that's going to make it to where she's free. What she wants to do at this point, she's already made the shift. She wants to know me. She wants what I want. And her yes to me is gonna change everything. She's gonna still make some mistakes, I'm pretty sure. But she wants what I'm carrying. Weird. 
There's hope for the hopeless and all who have strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, the rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow and heaven can't cure. kindness will do when you have enough confidence to believe in who you are she's going to start acting kind of drunk and you're going to think that she got drugged or something she's overwhelmed right now it doesn't have to make sense for her to experience it and your brain has got in the way in your belief system and people have taught you in and out of ways to think. And you've been lied to at so many levels that if you are carrying anxiety in you, I'm not gonna ask for you to raise your hand, but if you're carrying anxiety in you, it's rooted in fear and it's rooted in a lie and it's just not true. And so I come against it in the name of Jesus. The lies have to go in this space and truth come. It's not a game. And I'm not going to play games with her. And I'm not going to try to put on a show with her. She's worth too much. It's okay that she doesn't understand at all. She's got her whole life to carry my presence and to learn from me because I'm gentle and because I'm kind. Sounds like the same invitation that Jesus gave to us when he said, come to me, everybody who is weary and heavy burdened. If you're anxious and you're distressed and you feel just like you're beat down. There's a bunch of tough men in here that have got, well, I speak to men mostly, so women just listen. Well, I shouldn't tell you what to do. That's an invitation. And I'm going to get way more trouble out there than I am in here. I'll guarantee down to you. Because, <clears throat> man, your courage and your bravery and your stubbornness has kept you alive. And I honor that. But it don't work with this. It don't work when we're leading our families. You can be hard when you need to be hard. But when it's time to not be, learn that gentleness is still the way. I know. When you move, I move. And then you move, and then I move. And then you move faster, and I move faster. It's so cool. It's almost like God's keeping pace with us. And he's okay with us being too scared to move.
clean because she's my servant. And I think there's a lot of people doing their best to serve God, to serve the family, to be a better person. And it just feels like a lot of effort. What if we all just took a really deep breath? Just release the tension. You just did it. See that? We can change the atmosphere. We can cooperate with what God's doing. Don't make it about her. This is really about you. All the responsibilities and all the things that we just do habitually. You know, if we forget this face-to-face -face encounter that makes to where I see you, I know you, and I'm not mad at you. I want you to have what I see in you. I want you to believe what I believe about you. You said yes to me, and that comes with every promise I have. Is God really this good? Has religion and our culture so distorted the nature of God that we can't believe that He can be this good? That He would treat us with the same level of kindness and patience? That He would create circumstances just so that we could learn? I actually like to walk in. This isn't stubbornness. She's afraid of failure. She doesn't want to screw up again. I've got a friend here today that I haven't seen in years. Last time I saw him, he was serving a 15 year, I think, sentence. And we were in a prison. And now he's out, miraculously out, and doing supernaturally well. But do you know how much courage it takes to move forward when all you've had is punishment for your mistakes? Maybe we should clap. Let's try. Well, it worked for a minute. Oh, I love her. Man, she's going to feel so free when we get to run together. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Not a girl. Come on. Oh, that was really rude. I'm sorry.
they put a new pack on. I don't know how to run it. Sorry, we're having a little dress rehearsal here. I'm the only pastor that gets to take his shirt off in front of everybody. We're good? Have you got me again? communication to it the power demonstrated in kindness that was the other side I just got on so that was a new thing see the confidence what happens when you feel so loved and so valued, no more shame, no more punishment, what will you do? The world will change, I promise you. They'll follow you. They're looking for someone to follow, family. They're looking for a generation of people. That's not an age group. That's a people group that have said, we're tired of all the lies. We're tired of all the politics. We're not going to wait for our government to change, for us to change. We are a people that carry the Spirit of God. And when you are convinced of His goodness and the power that He wants you to carry, what can stop us? We will rule with love. And Jesus said, on my shoulders is going to rest the government, and that government, there's not going to be any end to it. What if that's the government that we're under, the government of heaven that makes it to where these powerful, confident, educated, qualified men and women carry the Spirit of God as she carries me, yielded to His hand and directed by His voice, not being punished for our fear or our failures, but being brought back into a place where we can feel free again. Oh my gosh, what would happen? If you've ever been broken hearted, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's no place to stay. And when he said he binds up the broken pieces and he takes things that were intended to destroy you and now works them together for your good, that you might be the first one in your lineage. You might be a first generation man or woman that is going to be so filled with kindness and wholeness that your whole family gets to profit from it. And for generations after this, they're going to be able to eat of that fruit. This was the message of the kingdom. This is what the gospel really was. That it's in Him that we move and we breathe and we have our being. This is not good horsemanship. I promise you. This is a new creation. We got more to do here, but I don't want to skip something here with y'all. If you feel like maybe just right now, this is what you want to be able to just say yes 
to Jesus and whatever it looks like for you to take me the way I am, I want you to take me the way I am and help me to feel what this horse is feeling. If you want that, raise your hand. Who wouldn't want it? How can you not want this? Why should you spend your life running around scared, trying to go from meal to meal, day to day, provision to provision, relationship to relationship, trying to wait for someone else to fix your messed up life? Or settle in with the fact that you've just had to shut your heart off to be a hard ass, whoop, hard person. <laughs> because it hurts too much to feel. You were created with a heart to feel. And men, we are every bit, if not more, emotional than women. We just choose other emotions over than crying. We'll use anger. We'll use bitterness. We'll just be the old fuddy dud. If you want this, raise your hand. Father, you see the hand the more you see the heart the behind this, the story that goes along with that hand that you've carried them to this place just so that today we can say today is the brand new day. That our past is no longer going to have to rule us. Yes, it's influenced us, but it's not your fault. So much of what you've been exposed to way before you even knew how to process things, you're being programmed by a world that wanted to destroy you. It ain't your fault, Tanner. But you're going to get the power to know what to do with it next. You don't have to live this way. Jesus took the shame away and made it to where everybody gets to see what it's like to be fully alive. And Jesus demonstrated this is what it looks like to be the first mourn among many from the dead. This is what it looks like to be born again. And Jesus modeled it. He didn't use magic tricks or cheat to be a whole man. He actually learned what he learned through the things he suffered. So we can't disqualify Jesus as well. Of course, if I was the Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One, I'd have been perfect too. He didn't leave us with that excuse. He said, now I call you the son of God. I now call you my body. And folks, I've worked for organizations that spend millions and millions of dollars to go into an event just like this for one thing, to preach the gospel, but to get the churches to come together. Guess how much we spend? I don't know. I think they were running around the neighborhood robbing chairs from yards because they had to find enough chairs to seat you all because we had all these churches say yes. We love our community. We're not about building a population or a congregation. We want family. We want communities that feel so safe and so powerful that they don't have to live like the generation before them did. We don't have to go backwards. We're going to take technology and education and this free spirit and actually know what it looks like to be harnessed with the love and the power of God. Man, I sound like a preacher. <sighs> I want a saddle. That's what I want. Oh, mm -hmm.
grace, family. That's how community works, by the way. We actually have each other's backs. I was making a mistake with her. I need to know that. If you love me, you're going to let me know that, right? Why did it take y'all so long to say something? <laughs> because it feels rude, right? Well, it's not when you're in family. Like, you got a booger in your nose. My wife will let me know. So, if we're going to be family... Let's do it. not very grateful for it yet. It is a gift. It is. Atta girl. Atta girl. No, no, no. Atta girl. Atta girl. Atta girl. girl. Back to down before me time and time again and just say you're going to be convinced of my love for you either now or later and when I decided that it was now 
I gave my whole heart to Jesus and it was, we talked about it last night that uh, many of you weren't there. Literally my born again experience was Jesus, I hate your people. I hate church, but I love you. Like I, I want to know you. I want to know what it's like to be one of your sons. And he was so kind that he was okay with me hating the people he loved until I got my heart healed enough that I could fall in love. That I didn't have to use anger and bitterness any longer. But it took a while. It was just a ton of patience. Now he said I was a champion bareback rider. Remember that. I fall out of the side a lot of the time they move fast. like it here when we take this first big step it's only because she doesn't know how healed she is my goodness yeah clap why not that's why <laughs> that's a good girl that's a good girl that's a good girl yeah and why do we still shame and punish people why not just be okay with who you are, where you're at? What God said about you is actually true. He made all things new. What does that mean? I think it means all things remain new. She's a new creation. So she doesn't have to be afraid of herself because I got her. Even when she's throwing a fit, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I put a pulse monitor on me once and found out that when her whole world is falling apart and she's bucking around and panicked and bouncing off the fences, I realized the depth of the miracle of what God has done inside of me is that my pulse never went up. It went up whenever I ran because I'm like I said, been 30 for 22 years. But what would happen if we didn't have to respond to the world around us, that we carried a power and a presence to change the world around us? That you're the one that is actually in control of one thing. What's going on in here? I can't change the people around me. I refuse to, even Jesus didn't, but I can't influence. But I can only influence to the same degree that I can create a space that people can feel safe. That's what the whole space was created for today. The whole space is just so you can have another chance to never again question the goodness of God. That you're not getting old and dying. You're actually going from glory to glory and that you're going to live forever because this is we were built to live forever. And if you want to live forever, that's a long time to live miserable. Right? Some people are like, I can't wait till I die and go to heaven. <laughs> that sucks. Like, I know what it's like to be in pain. I've watched my, my dad suffer through a horrible disease and he just wanted out of the body. I get that. But let's not look, use it as a cock-out 
and an excuse to somehow escape and go to heaven. Man, it's just glory to glory in this life that God wants you to understand His goodness so much that now the wisdom you carry in an old body, I need it. We need your wisdom. in one side of her life to the other side. That's why you can approach a horse from one direction and they get nervous when you approach them from the other direction. We're not too different from that. It's like you're okay with God having certain aspects of your life. Yeah, I believe in God. I do whatever, like whatever your belief is. I don't want her to just acknowledge I exist. I want her to be convinced of my goodness. And if you want to know what repentance looks like, and if we are called as a nation to repent, uh-oh, can I talk about that? Repent sounds like a scary word. It's like fall on your knees and just fall or something. Maybe that's what you need to do. It's say, I'm sorry. But true repentance is we're just going to get so caught up in the goodness of God that our thinking is going to change. We're not going to keep running from thing to thing, making excuses why our life isn't working and blaming everybody else because of it. Repentance is a nation that's going to call out on the name of Jesus and say that we actually believe what you said is true. And it's more true than what I've been told or what I believe. And even if I don't understand it, I don't ever want to lose this. She doesn't understand, really. Like she has no idea what this is going to look like a year down the road. She's built for speed. She's built to see things that other people can't see. She's built to carry a presence of a good master that's going to take her from glory to glory, to teach her things that makes her so sensitive that she's literally going to look a direction and she's going to feel him. Look, you're going to carry the presence of God to such a degree that you're not going to have to wonder what you're supposed to do. You're going to look and you're going to see things that you've never seen but they were already there. You're going to look in the mirror. It's like me dancing with my wife. Okay, I'm making it super simple. What if you looked in the mirror and you saw the glory of God? What if you actually saw your reflection as he says, you carry my glory and you are exactly who I said that you are. You're no longer a sinner that's just saved by grace. You're a son and you get to call yourself not just a son of God, but the son of God because it's super personal to me. I hope that don't sound like blasphemy to you, but he says I'm a son and everything that he has, he's given to me. I don't understand all that. I just know it's true. 
And what if you quit shaming yourself and judging yourself and judging yourself by other people and you looked in the mirror and all you saw was, oh my God, I'm, I'm actually what you said I am. I'm no longer having to look around to the world to figure out how to get validated. How are we on time? Are we, are we up, up on time? I want to really respect you guys, but I feel like I'm in a family meeting right now and I don't even want to stop. 11.05? She said, if you're in a hurry, go on, get. I just want to give her one more gift for a second, and we're going to do this pretty quick. And I want to see Jesus used visuals, and he made it where people would have a, um, something to picture so that they could see a spiritual truth. And so that's all we're doing here today, is making it to where I don't ever want you to forget this. And let whatever language God gives you to, in remembrance of this to be something that makes it to where you're never going to settle for the systems of the world in an old belief system anymore. Free at last, he has ransomed me of his grace. understand what I'm asking her to do. It would be kind of silly for me to just leave with this this round pen with her and have her hope that she can figure out, or have me hope that she can figure out what I'm thinking. So Jesus actually said that he's going to put his word in us. And as you actually read the Bible, which was a really hard thing for a dyslexic, illiterate 21-year-old when I gave my life to Jesus. I remember I told you I hated church, so I wasn't going to church, and I couldn't read. I was pretty dependent on the only thing I knew that Jesus said is that he loved me and he had a plan for me. And in my pursuit of that, made it to where his words started filling my mouth, and it was just his goodness that I knew of. I didn't know anything else, but that was enough to make it to where every turn that I took, I wanted it to be closer and closer to his goodness. So if we're connected to God and He actually wants to communicate to us, 
and the bit in the mouth, the Bible says, is it's kind of like a rudder on a ship. A little small part of your mouth, small part of your body can change the whole direction of the entire body. Eventually. I think she liked the halter better. It would be fair if I did this side better because you like it better, huh? That's a good girl. I just want her to know which way to go. And it's not always going to be in circles. We're going to have a destination. We're going to have a journey we get to go on. And it's going to be fun and it's going to be challenging. And it's going to be life-giving. And our kids are going to get to watch what happens when people lead with love. Okay, we're going to wrap up. She's going to buck again, so go ahead and clap. Oh, no. <laughs> I love the fact that the thing that used to lead her, she's now standing on. So, I don't know what that means to y'all, but... Whatever's been leading your life, can you just symbolically picture yourself saying, I'm no longer going to be led around by that? I know that might seem a little bit over dramatic, but it matters when you change one system for another. It's one government for another. You've had a bully telling you what to do most of your life. And that bully has sound like a mean father that's going to have his way. And that is not who God is. He is kind and he's gentle and he's patient. And yes, he's super powerful. And I just feel like it's the greatest privilege in this world that we get to be his sons and daughters and go about the things that it is that he put in our heart to do. I just love horses. But I love people more. And now it just becomes this beautiful thing where... I hope you never forget what you saw because if you know anything about horses, you don't go that far that fast with a horse that's surrounded by a whole bunch of stimulation. Maybe some of you do, I don't know. But my experience is that take me a minute. So whatever God's doing in you here, we've got people that have got orange shirts on that have just said, hey, if, if there's anybody that has something, questions, counseling, wants prayer, a, a what to do next thing, grab one of these people with the orange shirts. They're not weird. They actually just super, super love you and they love this community. They, they don't want anybody to feel like they're alone. They don't have an agenda. Nobody's looking for converts to come to their church. We're looking for a people that's so free and full of love that we just choose to do life together because that's what we were created for. So if you want to pray with me, you can... Yeah, we got a whole bunch of people standing. If you're sitting and you want to stand, if you're standing, I'm just counting you in because you stood this long, you're in. Okay, so you're not going to stand and watch this monkey on a horse because you don't understand. So all, all our Father is saying is, would you let me love you? Will you understand that I don't, allow, I don't want sin to separate you from me anymore? That there was a price paid so that you don't have to feel trapped anymore. And if that's what you want, stand with me and, and we're going to pray. Yeah, you all stand, I'm going to kneel. What a sacred, sacred thing. Jesus took 12 disciples and a handful of women and went and changed the world. Like turned it up on upside down or right side up, however you want to look at it. What will happen to this county if we actually took this serious? If we realize that this sacred moment right now is a whole community standing and saying, Jesus, we offer our lives to you. Holy Spirit, we've already invited you to come and do whatever you want to do in us. And now you've just called us worthy. That you're justified in Jesus. 
that you're pure and you're holy, hey, let them come. They're fine. Yeah. What's his name? Jared. little one was getting restless and that was me when I was a kid and everyone was trying to tell me to sit down and shut up not you Jared really powerful son and what a beautiful beautiful thing because when we were, we're trained with kindness there's nothing we can't do do you ride horses yeah, have you ever rode one do you want to Oh, well, well, what if we could create a safe space where really is this good? The broken, traumatized people can become whole again. You want to go with see mama again? You want to talk with me? Go mama. You're so cool. All right. Father, we stand here in your presence and it's just amazing what you're saying to us and what you've trusted us with. And so we stand just to say yes to you and to each other that we want to learn how to love this way and that it's not a skill set that we're going to learn through reading. It's something that you're actually going to impart to us. So we receive you, Holy Spirit, to be the one to teach us to love as we are loved. Thank you for the gift of forgiveness, the gift of kindness and generosity and being a perfect father that knows how to raise up families. So we surrender our lives to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, this is always an awkward moment for me because I'm not much of a preacher performer thing. But... If you need something, I'm, i got to get back to Southeast Idaho tonight, so it's only a seven-hour drive. I'll stay as long as, as you guys have questions. But there's people here in your community that are filled with wisdom and hope and the goodness of God. And I, but, but I'd be glad to uh, pray with you as well. But don't leave here. Well, I'll say it this way. You guys are country. You leave here the same way you came in. That's your own damn fault. So, it's on you now. You don't have to leave here the same way. And Jesus is not a bully. And he's not just a teacher. He's a father that knows how to change what it is that's inside of us. And heal things that are broken. And give you visions for what life can be like. And for those of you that have devoted your life to this event, so what is our great reward? And there's nothing like it when my family comes together and we're together family. So uh, you, there's, we got something else. So, oh, yeah, okay, thank you. You want my microphone? It's awesome. I'll stick with mine. Thank you. If you feel like God is uh, still tugging on your heart, and you got a few bucks in you that needs to be changed, look for people in the orange shirts. They are willing to uh, spend some time with you, to listen to you, to pray with you, just to be there as, as a friend. So feel free to do that. One thing I just sit here listening to the worship music and I can't think of any better way to worship our Heavenly Father than with Maggie's music. And I know that she's got some CDs, some good CDs. And they're right over there.
over there on the table to just meet with her. But what a way to experience a fellowship with Jesus Christ through her music. So please look her up. I'm going to make those available to you. Along with the people in the orange shirts, we've got some information. we got some events coming up, some family events. We're going to want to plug you in. Hope to see you to those. We don't want you just rushing out of here. We want you to just hang back and just spend some time with some friends and family and, and good people. Get to talk to Todd if you can. But please feel free to, to just find somebody and to speak to them, your heart. We really want you to leave um, just renewed and blessed with the Spirit of Christ. We just thank you. God bless you all for being here. God bless your families. Let's work together to change our country and nation. Jesus Christ first. Thanks again, Todd. You bet. Missed. Maggie's gonna sing. Oh, I, are you? I just sit and listen.